Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing. I'm on a different. Hello, this is Lana. Hello, this is the North Central Texas Council of Governments, and we'll be ready to start the telephone town hall shortly. Thank you.
Okay. Yes, you may start the um, telephone town hall now. Thank you. Okay. When welcome to the North Central Texas Council of Government's public information meeting for the Dallas-Fort Worth High-Speed Rail Transportation Connections Study. My name is Michael Morris. I'm the Director of Transportation here at the North Central Texas Council of Governments. And on behalf of the Council of Governments and Transportation Council, we thank you very much for participating in our public meeting. This week we got great news from the Federal Railroad Administration as they approved the environmental documents for high-speed rail between Houston and Dallas. So we have a, a real Dallas uh, location uh, that we're shooting for in downtown, and you'll hear more about that during the uh, presentation. We'll be monitoring the Texas Central Partners financial close on this particular project. Uh, they're a great partner um, in this process and implementing one of three legs in high-speed rail system for the state of Texas. Uh, it's it's a, a presentation with a great team today. Each of us will introduce ourselves as we go through, uh, in a pretty efficient fashion, uh, the methodology uh, to be used uh, as we uh, explore the possibility of high-speed rail between Dallas, Arlington, and in Fort Worth. I ask a special uh, element uh, for you listening. Uh, please focus on where and how. So you'll hear us talk about alignments. So where does high speed rail go? And then how I ask you to focus on the technologies that you'll hear presented, as well as different groups of citizens uh, that you can help us uh, get engaged so we benefit from their understanding and communication of what it is we're doing on this particular project. So again, thank you for participating in our uh, public meeting this evening, and I turn it over to Rebecca. Thank you, Michael. This is Rebecca Hernandez with the North Central Texas Council of Governments. During this presentation, we will cover many topics related to the study. These topics include methods to participate by asking questions or submitting comments, a project overview and the project's background will be provided, a listing of possible technologies available to travel on, the possible alignments within the corridor, and ways to stay informed about the project will all be provided. There are two primary ways to provide comments or ask questions during the study. The first is to use our online comment form at www.nctcog.org forward slash DFW hyphen HSTCS. The second is to mail questions or comments to DFW HSTC study at Post Office Box 5888, Arlington, Texas 76005. For those listening over the phone, the presentation slides are available on our project website. Additionally, if you need a copy of the presentation mailed to you, please make that request to our office by email or phone. At the conclusion of this presentation, we will be opening up the phone line for public comment. For those on the phone, please press zero to speak. We will request your city and zip code, then you will be placed in queue. You will still be able to hear the meeting when you are in queue. As a reminder, to participate over the phone, I will now provide you with that phone number. 
you may dial 855-756-7520, extension 65721 pound, and then press zero if you wish to speak. We will also open up the online platform for public comments or questions at the conclusion of the presentation if you wish to type in your comments or questions. For technical difficulties during the online platform, please call 972-628-3003 or email nvlek, that's N-V-L-E-C-K at hntb.org. Thank you, Rebecca. My name is Kevin Felt, and I am a staff member here at the North Central Texas Council of Governments. Please take the time to review the project information and provide comments. We really appreciate any comments we can receive from any source. The next section will discuss the project background and overview. The primary project objective is to evaluate high-speed transportation technology options between downtown Dallas and downtown Fort Worth. This includes analyzing both alignment and transportation mode options between the two cities. The objective includes finding ways to connect the Dallas-Fort Worth region to other proposed high-performance passenger systems in Texas. Also, the project will investigate ways to enhance connections to the regional transportation systems, including automobile, bus, rail, bicycle, and pedestrian networks. An additional objective is to obtain federal environmental approval to design and implement the project. The stated objectives will be analyzed in the study area as shown. This area is generally bounded by State Highway 121 and State Highway 183 to the north, Interstate Highway 35E to the east, Downtown Fort Worth to the west, and United States Highway 287 and State Highway 303 to the south. As mentioned earlier, the study objective is to provide a connection to other proposed high-performance transportation systems. This project, highlighted in orange, when completed would connect the proposed Dallas to Houston high-speed rail project, highlighted in gray, to a proposed high-performance system traveling south from downtown Fort Worth highlighted in purple, to areas in central and south Texas. The Dallas to Fort Worth high-speed transportation connection study is divided into two phases. The first phase will analyze all reasonable alternatives regarding alignment, corridor, and travel technology. The wide range of alternatives will be pared down to a small number of recommended travel technologies and a small number of alignment options to a multiple level screening process to be further analyzed in phase two. The second phase will be an engineering and environmental analysis as prescribed by the National Environmental Policy Act. The second phase will include conceptual and preliminary engineering tasks. The study will also include financial and project management plans. Phase two will conclude with a decision by the federal government regarding next project steps. Staff anticipates the first phase to take approximately 12 months and conclude in spring 2021. During the first phase, there will be three opportunities for the region to participate in the study through public meeting events. Today's meeting is the first. Another meeting is scheduled in December 2020 and the final meeting in April 2021. The phase two schedule indicates beginning the work efforts in early summer 2021 and concludes in late spring of 2023. This 24 month schedule includes two primary public engagement events in early fall 2021 and late summer 2022. As always, questions and comments are welcome throughout the entire project study. One of the initial tasks for this type of project is to develop a description of the project purpose which addresses the project objectives. 
The, pro the preliminary project purpose is to connect downtown Dallas and downtown Fort Worth with high-speed intercity passenger rail service or an advanced high-speed ground transportation technology to provide an alternative to travel by automobile. To distance the state to, a, I'm sorry, to advance the state high performance rail transportation network to support economic development opportunities in the Dallas Fort Worth region and to enhance connectivity. Enhancing connectivity occurs at two levels. One level encompasses the local transportation networks like the DART light rail system or the text rail system, local bus systems, the roadway system, and bicycle and pedestrian systems. The second level of enhancing connectivity is coordinating connections to other high-speed transportation systems in Texas, including the Dallas to Houston high-speed rail system and a planned high-performance transportation system traveling south from Fort Worth to central and south Texas. One reason for the need to connect the Dallas-Fort Worth region to other metropolitan areas is the region's population and employment growth. The Dallas-Fort Worth region's population is, is expected to grow by over 50 percent between 2018 and 2045 to over 11 million people, while employment growth is expected to be over 46 percent to more than 7 million people employed by 2045. Other metropolitan areas within the Texas Triangle mega region anticipate very similar population and employment growth over the next 25 years. With the high population and employment growth in the Dallas-Fort Worth region comes increased travel congestion and costs associated with more traffic congestion. The amount of miles all travelers in the region drive is expected to increase by over 56% by 2045. This increase in total miles traveled results in a 59% increase in travel time throughout the region. Travel time increases due to traffic congestion are expected to be the worst in Tarrant and Dallas counties, with Dallas County travelers expected to experience a 72% increase in travel time above current levels by 2045. The annual cost of the expected congestion to all travelers in the region is estimated to rise by 125% by 2045. The need for connectivity to other metropolitan regions is focused on the Texas Triangle mega region as shown here. The Texas Triangle mega region is made up of several large metropolitan regions including Dallas-Fort Worth, Houston, Austin, and San Antonio. High-speed transportation is optimal for connecting large metropolitan regions with any mega region compared to commercial air travel due to the strategic distances between regions and additional travel time needed for commercial aircraft. In addition to high population and employment growth in the DFW region, the state of Texas is growing rapidly as well. Population in Texas is, is expected to grow by almost 38 percent to just under 41 million people by 2045. This means employment growth will also be fast-paced. Employment in Texas is expected to rise by more than 44% to about 26.3 million people by 2045. With all the expected growth in population in the Dallas-Fort Worth region and within Texas and within the Texas Triangle and the anticipated traffic delays caused by congestion, more and faster travel choices are needed. Additional travel choices will increase connectivity to, from, and within the Dallas-Fort Worth region and will lessen demand on the region's roadways. Additional travel choices will also allow for more reliable travel times and lead to better air quality within the region. Good evening, my name is Chris Masters with h and and we're gonna talk about the transportation technologies. There are many options for our region to provide the travel choices needed to reduce anticipated travel delays and the associated costs while providing the needed connectivity to, from, and within the region. There are several high-speed transportation technologies or modes of travel to be examined uh, from their use to meet the region's travel needs. These modes of travel include conventional passenger rail or trains similar to the Trinity Railway Express or to Amtrak trains higher speed trains, which are faster than conventional trains, but slower than high speed trains. 
higher speed trains are similar to the Amtrak Acela service that operates between Washington, D.C. and Boston. Speed trains are not currently speed trains operating in the United States, but are operating in many other countries. High speed trains are the passenger trains proposed for the Dallas to Houston system. Magnetic levitation, or maglev for short, is another high speed train technology. While similar to high speed trains in many aspects, maglev trains hover over the tracks using very strong magnets instead of relying on steel wheels to connect to steel rail in order to stay on the track. Maglev trains are currently in limited operation in other countries. The newest high-speed transportation technology is Hyperloop. Hyperloop technology incorporates a passenger or cargo pod moving at speeds up to 650 miles per hour in a near vacuum tube. The concept is similar to the vacuum tubes used to transfer transactions at a bank uh, through a drive through lane. In addition, other modes of travel will be examined as they become known. If you know of any additional transportation technologies we should examine during the study, please let us know by including this in your comment form. Each of the technologies or modes of transportation to be examined have various design and operating characteristics. These design and operation characteristics include top speed, the type of guideway or the tracks used, peak headways, meaning how often the train departs a station, the train's operating style, the cargo hauling capability, and if the technology is ready for, trans uh, for passenger use. Uh, these characteristics are identified for conventional trains, higher speed trains, and high speed trains in this graphic. The operating and design characteristics for magnetic levitation trains and hyperloop technologies are shown on this slide. It's inter interesting to note that all other train style technologies except hyperloop have similar design and operating styles. The Hyperloop technology exhibits different characteristics regarding speed, operating style, and the ability to accommodate cargo. Looking more closely at the design characteristics for each technology, it's important to understand how the footprint and the profile uh, affect the surrounding environment, including the amount of right-of-way width needed. A typical cross section each technology gives a view of the technology as its associated infrastructure required. A typical section provides an example of what could be expected to generally be built through the corridor. Some variations will occur within the corridor, but is generally how the technology is expected to be built. The typical section for conventional and high-speed trains are shown on this slide. Unlike the conventional and high-speed train typical sections, which are generally constructed on the ground or at grade, the technologies with the highest speeds require the vehicles to operate generally above grade or on bridge structures throughout the corridor. The typical sections for high-speed and magnetic levitation trains and the Hyperloop technology are shown here. It's important to note if other viable high-speed technology tra uh, transportation technologies are analyzed, similar information will be examined. A quick comparison of the technologies examined so far indicates several similarities and differences among the technologies. The similarities include how each technology operates on a fixed guideway or the track of some kind and reaches speeds over 100 miles per hour. Each technology requires a similar amount of property for right-of-way, and each needs stations for access to the system and to maintenance facilities. Uh, differences among the various technologies include the type of propulsion system and the number and frequency of station locations. Other differences include the operating schedule and if the technology can accommodate cargo movements. There are other similarities and differences among the technologies, but this slide identifies the major components. Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> and good evening, everyone. My name is Ian Bryant with HNTB. I'm gonna talk to you this evening about potential alignments and corridors 
that we'll evaluate during this study, as well as the alternatives evaluation process. So in addition to analyzing several high-speed transportation modes or technologies that Chris just discussed, there are many corridor possibilities these technologies can use to travel between downtown Fort Worth and downtown Dallas. Using previous transportation studies that examined corridors between Dallas and Fort Worth, the project team identified many possible alignments and corridors to analyze. In general, the project team identified alignments and corridors along existing transportation routes as much as possible to minimize the need to acquire additional property. Also, using existing transportation corridors would minimize impacts to homes and businesses. Each alignment and corridor option will connect a central station in downtown Fort Worth to the proposed high-speed rail station in downtown Dallas. In all, 43 distinct alignments and corridors have currently been identified for study by the project team. The project team is also very interested to learn of other potential alignments or corridor options to study. If you know of a possible alignment or corridor not already identified, please let us know by providing your thoughts in the comment form. The 43 distinct alignments and corridors can be grouped into five families of options. These five families are generally identified as the Trinity Railway Express or TRE alignments, the Trinity River alignments, the IH-30 alignments, the SH-180 alignments, and the SH-303 alignments, as shown on this map. The alignments generally associated with the TRE corridor follow the Trinity Railway Express for some length along their route. They leave Fort Worth Central Station along the TRE corridor, paralleling SH-121 to IH-820. The alignments generally continue along the TRE corridor into downtown Dallas, with an optional deviation departing from the TRE corridor at SH-10 to SH-183, and then reuniting with the TRE corridor at its junction with IH-35E in Dallas. Another alignment alternative follows IH-30, leaving downtown Fort Worth before heading north along SH-360 in Arlington, then heading east along the TRE corridor into downtown Dallas. The next family of alignments generally follows the west fork of the Trinity River between downtown Fort Worth and downtown Dallas at some point along their path. These alignments parallel the IH-30 corridor leaving downtown Fort Worth before turning north to align with the West Fork of the Trinity River at the following locations. Near Beach Street in Fort Worth, just each east of IH 820 in Fort Worth, at SH 360 in Arlington, and just east of Beltline Road in Grand Prairie. Once east of SH 360, the alignment generally follows the Trinity River into downtown Dallas. The IH-30 family of alignments generally follow or are near the IH-30 corridor between downtown Fort Worth and downtown Dallas for majority of their route. Some of the alternatives include minor and moderate deviations in Arlington and Grand Prairie to avoid potential impacts to the SH-360 and President George Bush Turnpike interchanges with IH-30. There are also a couple of deviations off of IH-30 east of Loop 12. One such deviation runs parallel to the Union Pacific Railroad corridor north of IH-30 and into downtown Dallas. Alignments that generally follow the SH-180 corridor for a good portion of their route are included in, the, in this next family of alignments. While most of these alternatives follow SH-180, leaving downtown Fort Worth, some alignments follow IH-30 before joining SH-180 near SH-360. Heading east along SH-180 through Grand Prairie, these alignments diverge just west of Loop 12 into a variety of alternatives, including paralleling the Union Pacific Railroad tracks into downtown Dallas. One alternative continues along West Davis Street and Fort Worth Avenue to IH-30 into Dallas. Another alternative crosses the Mountain Creek Lake Dam heading southeast to parallel the Dart Red Line to the Dallas High Speed Rail Station. Finally, the SH-303 family of alignments generally follows SH-303 and the southwest leg of the Dart Red Line between downtown Fort Worth and downtown Dallas. On the Fort Worth end, one alternative parallels SH-180, leaving the Fort Worth Central Station, heading to IH-820 before following SH-303. 
while the other alternative follows US-287 and IH-820 before turning east to align with SH-303. So once all high-speed transportation technologies and travel modes have been identified, along with all possible alignment and corridor options, the process of evaluating all options will begin. The project team proposes a three-level screening process to pare down the vast number of possible options to a select few by the end of the first study phase, scheduled to end in spring 2021. The process is depicted on this graphic. It begins with identifying all pos possible alternatives. And this is where we need your help. If you have an option the project team has not thought of so far, please fill out a comment form and let, let us know. The first level of evaluation for the alternatives is to determine if the alternative meets the project purpose and the project need. The alternatives that meet the project purpose and need then move to the second level of evaluation. The second level focuses on identifying any flaws which may preclude the alternative from being built. Finally, the alternatives deemed to not have a fatal flaw are then put through a more detailed and stringent third level of evaluation. The goal is to complete the third level of evaluation with a limited number of technologies and alignments or corridors to be evaluated in the project's second phase. The level one evaluation aimed at determining if the alternative meets the project purpose and need is divided into two separate evaluations. The primary evaluation determines if the alternative serves both downtown Fort Worth and downtown Dallas with a competitive travel time connecting the high-speed rail station in downtown Dallas with the Fort Worth Central Station in downtown Fort Worth. The secondary evaluation in level one determines if the alternative is safe, reliable, and convenient, if it links to other high-speed transportation systems serving Texas, if it connects to existing regional passenger systems, and improves access to major activity centers in the study area. The level two evaluation process centers on determining if the alternative has any fatal flaws to prevent further development of the project. Various conditions are examined for each alternative, including proximity to environmental, environmentally sensitive areas, potential community impacts, technology maturity, compatibility with existing infrastructure, and operational characteristics. The third and final evaluation level criteria include cost estimates, potential impacts to environmentally sensitive areas, other potential community impacts, and the ability to construct the proposed project in the future. Thanks, Ian. This is Rebecca Hernandez with COG again. As I mentioned throughout this presentation, as mentioned throughout this presentation, the project team wants to know your thoughts and opinions regarding possible alternatives. There are several ways you can provide your thoughts and opinions. One way is to use the electronic comment form found at www.nctcog.org forward slash DFW hyphen HSTCS. A written letter may also be provided to DFW hyphen HSTC study, Post Office Box 5888, Arlington, Texas 76005. Additionally, there will be more public meetings scheduled in December 2020 and Spring 2021. For additional information and or to sign up for project notices, please vis visit the project website at www.nctcog.org forward slash DFW hyphen HSTCS. You may also request a presentation and or briefing to your organization through the project website. For those listening over the phone, the presentation slides are also available on our project website. Additionally, if you need a copy of the presentation mailed to you, please make that request to our office by phone or email. And I will hand it over to Michael to make any closing comments. Rebecca, thank you very much. 
On behalf of Carly and Rebecca and Amanda and Kimberly and Kevin, Chris and Ian, this is Michael Morris. I thank you very much um, for hearing our presentation and I very much appreciate the hard work of the individuals that put this uh, material together today and the technology behind reaching out to all of you uh, through these different uh, mediums. The project team would like to thank you for your time and interest. Uh, please provide your comments and opinions through the options provided. Your input is welcome and very valuable to the to this project's success. So again, I, I thank you all for participating. Remember, you know, the key is to focus on the where and on the how, both technologies as well as assisting us in developing grassroots participation in this uh, process. So now we'd like to hear from from you. Um, Rebecca, I turn it back over to you. Thank you. We will now be opening up the phone line for public comment or questions. For those on the phone, please press zero to speak. We will request your city and zip code. Then you will be placed in queue. You will still be able to hear the meeting while waiting in queue. For those who are listening online, we are now also opening up our online platform. You will now have access to type in public comments or questions. As a reminder, to gain access online, visit www.nctcog.org forward slash DFW hyphen HSTCS and follow the link to today's meeting. And as a reminder, to participate on the phone, dial 855-756-7520, extension 65721 pound, and press zero if you wish to speak. So Amanda or Kimberly, do we have any questions or comments at this point? At this time, we do not have any telephone callers who have any questions, so I would turn it over to Kimberly if we have any online comments. Thank you, Amanda. At this time, we do not have any questions on the online platform. But if you'd like, we will go ahead and read some questions that we received during yesterday's meeting. First question, will this presentation be publicly available? Yes, this presentation is posted on our project website. You can see just these slides as well as a narrated recording of the entire presentation and view that online. If the Texas Central Railway is not completed when or as expected, what would be the Dallas terminus? So we very much appreciate that. that uh question. I think the key is to get to downtown uh, Dallas. Uh, our plan right now is to co-locate with that uh, current station anticipated uh, to be coming from Houston. Uh, the question is, if reason that were not to occur, we would be getting pretty close to that same location uh, because of our interest to tie to the ground transportation system um, already invested by the public sector. In, in this case, it would be uh, the DART system. Um, it's important to have seamless connections uh, for our high-speed rail investment. Uh, to get to our downtowns, uh, this is a, a mobility plan and a regional transportation council to get people from downtowns to downtowns. As we continue to grow past 8 million and approaching 11 million, if people need to get to the airports, they can fly to the airports. Um, so we hope uh, Texas Central Partners is successful. Um, we've all worked hard to get that project uh, environmentally approved, uh, but we would be going to the same uh, general vicinity as they are because of the because of their decision and our decision uh, to get very close to that downtown passenger rail investment. 
To help us understand the value high speed rail will provide to my community, what is the expected travel time for trips between Dallas and Fort Worth with a stop in some mid city? So I think, you know, as you saw from all the uh, options that Ian had, some maybe are 20, 30, 30% longer than others. So depending on what route, and then you, you, you saw from, from uh, the work Chris presented, the speeds of these particular modes. So it depends on the speeds. Um, and the other thing that's important, and I won't answer the question directly, um, it depends on the real world operations. So what I don't want to do is leave the audience with, well, let's just put the pedal to the metal and hit the maximum speed and we can do it in X number of minutes. When in the real world, uh, even though you can accomplish those maximum speeds, um, because of other station decisions you're making and because you're interest in you know minimizing energy consumption or minimizing operating costs uh, you may not just you know flex that speed all the way to its to its maximum so i think as we you know get into these particular alternatives and simulate those supply side dynamics i think we'll be able to answer that particular question but you you should be anticipating downtown dallas and downtown fort worth getting significantly closer to each other, you know, a factor of two or a factor of three compared to uh, traveling in a congested automobile or the 60 minute uh, travel time that we have on the Trinity Railway Express. Uh, Chris, you want to add to that? Yes, it's also important to know that with our screening, uh, one of the first criteria we look at is will it be competitive with automobile traffic? So uh, that's one of the very first things that we do look at. Uh, we hit the first level of screening. So if we're not able to orders of magnitude improve on that, then you know we're we're, we're probably not going to be in the high speed rail business. Amanda, Michael, we do have one caller. It is Michael Rogers with the city of Dallas. So let me um, open his phone line here. Michael Rogers, you are um, uh, live to the to the uh, conference. Thank you. Good evening. I know this is uh, early in the process, but I do have a, a preference of any option that goes along I-30. And there's a reason, because you're close to a lot of vehicles that are going to be traveling. And really, when those vehicles on I-30 actually see this train that's passing them by, you might tend to see individuals change their mode and get out of their car and start then riding the train. So that's uh, one of the early um, uh, preferences that I like. Michael, it's nice to hear your voice again, and uh, thank you very much for that comment. There's, there's nothing like self-marketing when you're sitting there in a congested freeway and watching a high-speed train buzz by you at 150 miles an hour. So I, pre I very much appreciate that comment. Very good. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, sir. We do have one comment and, on qu and one question from the online platform. First comment, bullettrainusa.com strongly supports the alignment that goes through the Arlington area with a station location that is a destination itself and allows passengers to easily access key attractions in that area. So we very much appreciate that comment, and, and in addition to the benefits of the Arlington Station and the Entertainment District, that is our location for the fourth north-south uh, technology, so, some form of a technology investment, a, a transit technology investment to hit the Centerport Station and enter DFW International Airport. So we have equal access to our air carrier airports in this plan. So in addition to the benefits to Arlington and the entertainment district, um, that station is, is critical for us as we, as we consider a fourth uh, rail option into DFW International Airport. So we very much appreciate that question. Kimberly, any, any other comments? Yes, we have one more comment. Downtown Fort Worth, Inc. has been following this project since its inception 
and feel strongly that connection to downtown Fort Worth is vitally important. Well, we, we, we very much support that and we appreciate their involvement in Kevin, the, the hard work you were doing in station locations and in downtown Fort Worth. So let me, let me pass it on to you and some of the work you were doing with Fort Worth Inc. on, on the importance and the general vicinity of a Fort Worth location and its proximity to its passenger rail system. I would also remind everyone that the uh, initial purpose and need the purpose of the project is to connect downtown Fort Worth to downtown Dallas. So that is very high on our um, to-do list as well. And that connection is, is in close proximity to the two rail lines that operate from downtown Fort Worth uh, as well. So as, as you develop high speeds to the downtown, you, you create a network of accessibility to other locations, Grapevine, North Richmond Hills, other stations in Fort Worth. Um, and as we extend the regional rail system into the hospital district, we have the ability of you know getting to jobs in the hospital district as well. So Amanda or Kimberly, do you have anyone else who wishes to uh, go on record uh, with regard to their position? On the telephone line, we do not have any speakers who have currently requested to ask a question or provide a comment. Just a reminder that you can press zero and um, we will just ask you for your name and city and zip code and then you'll be entered into the speaker queue. We do not have any new questions or comments on the online platform, but I will continue reading questions that were received at yesterday's meeting. Why is air not considered part of the regional transportation system? In Western Europe and Eastern Asia, you can fly into a metro area and walk to high-speed rail connections. Are we not considering that at all in DFW? So it's a very, it's a very good question. You know, why, why isn't, say, the high-speed rail going to our aviation uh, locations? It was probably, you know, 10 years ago, lots of thinking you know, in the United States with regard to maybe 15 years ago, uh, connect high speed rail to uh, to the airport. So, you know, Houston airports to DFW airport or Love Field. We always scratched our head with regard to that point, because if you're going from an airport to an airport, there's a good chance if you're going to that location, you would simply take an airplane for that um, trip. And then when you think of what happens in the Northeast, you know, you're still in major cities like uh, Dulles Airport to downtown or in New York City's, you know, Kennedy or LaGuardia Airport to downtown. If you fly to those cities, you're still an hour from the downtown. So our concept, and I think it's a growing interest, is to, to really get to the downtowns. So what you're doing is you're, you're creating an option that if a person is, is traveling to our region, say from, from Houston, um, if they're going to, say, Grapevine or North Richmond Hills or Alliance Airport, maybe they end up flying and they, they land at the airport and then go the rest of the way that way. But if they're trying to get to downtown Dallas or downtown Fort Worth or to Arlington, you, ha you have a different intercity connection, which in this case would be high-speed rail. So we think we're giving more options for inner city travel by having multiple destinations for our major investments. So our airports are where they are and high speed rail is, is probably close to 15 years now been, been focused on our downtowns. Kevin, you wanna add anything to that? Yeah, Michael, I would also add that the State Highway 183 um, family of alignments um, comes very close to the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport and passes by the Love Field Airport as well. So there's an opportunity that we'll be investigating that that may be the case that we we have some connectivity to those to those airports in, in that particular in those particular families. And again, even if you're in the I-30 alignment, as Michael Rogers talked about, it is it is not a difficult transfer to the new north south technology to get to DFW International Airport, just like it's not a heavy lift to go into downtown Dallas and take light rail to Love Field. So. Those rail, those rail connections to our airports uh, are very much on our mind. And I think we get a twofer 
by going to the downtown. Full so inner city connections to get to downtown. To downtown, it creates maybe the opportunity of in-region travel. In this case, from downtown to downtown. In, in our study, uh, and you still have the ability to get to the international airports. So you're going Houston to to DFW and then to Paris, France. That's still not. Uh, if you wish to take high-speed rail to the Dallas-Fort Worth region and then go to Paris, France, that's still not a difficult maneuver in this plan. So we very much appreciate that question. What is the status of the proposed Fort Worth to Laredo line? How does the potential Fort Worth to Laredo line affect the ideal alignment in downtown Fort Worth? So let me answer the second part of that question first. Our commitment when we go into downtown Fort Worth is to come in in a way most likely heading south so we do not preclude our ability to, to continue south um, towards Waco, Temple Colleen, Austin, San Antonio, Laredo, and on to Monterey, Mexico. No different than the Dallas station is in a location that cannot preclude the ability of extending north and west from the downtown Dallas station. So those those synergies are a requirement in what it is we're we're doing. Uh, we finished a, a you know a sort of a feasibility study and a stakeholder study in those six communities I mentioned. Um, the Regional Transportation Council wishes to go in front of the Texas Transportation Commission. So we are asking those six metropolitan regions to join us and once the Texas Transportation, we've sent a letter to ask for a presentation to them. So the six urban regions would present in front of the commission asking them to move their tier one high speed rail study to tier two, the same tier two study we're doing in this quarter. Um, TxDOT would then be asked to take the lead to environmentally clear from where we stop in downtown Fort Worth all the way to uh, uh, Laredo and, and hopefully beyond uh, into Mexico. Uh, once we find out when live presentations can go in front of the commission, we've asked to be slotted for our elected officials in our six urban regions to make that presentation to the Texas Transportation Commission. They, are, they would be the author of the tier two similar to our office being the author of this tier two environmental document. We have one new comment from the online platform. This comes from Chad Edwards with the city of Fort Worth. This is an exciting opportunity to extend the future of high speed rail from Dallas to Fort Worth and beyond. The city is supportive of the downtown station and future economic development opportunities it provides. We look forward to refining their out options. So we very much appreciate that um, comment, Chad, and nice to hear your thoughts on this. And um, you know, we're working hard to to get to downtown Fort Worth. So we very much appreciate that that comment. I will read another question from yesterday's meeting. How many stops, if any, are anticipated between Dallas and Fort Worth? So, Kevin, you wanna. You want to take that? I guess there's three stations, so we would have, you know, we're hopeful to have at least one stop. But depending on alignments and speeds and modes, it, it could be more. So let me turn it over to you. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so depending upon the type of technology that we use, um, we would have at least one stop between Fort Worth and Dallas, anticipated to be in Arlington. Um, and then other technologies allow us for additional uh, stop locations, which would then have a bypass sort of um, uh, mainline system. So it could depend upon the technology and the alignment that we select on how many stations there would be, but we anticipate at least one additional station besides Dallas and Fort Worth. So I think if you go back to Kevin's, uh, Kevin's comment there and Chris's point earlier, you know, we have the Trinity Railway Express. You know, the good news is we have lots of stations. Uh, the bad news is we have lots of stations, and it takes almost an hour to cross the region. So if you go back to the, you know, the purpose and need, uh, I don't want to mislead the, the person who made the question, 
you know, your first, you know, inclination is to have lots of stations, but the speed significantly drops and you're no longer a high speed rail environment. So it's a it's a difficult, you know, the more stations you have, the, in theory you may have more riders, but the more you drift away from from our particular purpose of connecting these two d downtowns at in a really fast speed. So, you know, I, I think it's going to be one. It could be zero, depending on, you know, what Arlington's interest uh, is. Right now, they're very interested. So, you know, right now, it's Arlington at about halfway. In theory, it could be more, but I don't want to mislead anyone. There isn't an anticipation of having lots of stations because it's horribly difficult for most of those modes it's horribly difficult to, to maintain high speeds. Now, in the case of Hyperloop, you more so maybe um, than the other modes, you could potentially skip stations because Hyperloop is a technology that is origin, origins and destinations. The other modes tend to wish to collect and distribute through stations. So it's possible you could have more stations and remember that Hyperloop technology is an on-demand technology. So you go to the station and say, I, I want to go to this station and it doesn't stop and pick up a whole bunch of other people. No different than being in a extremely tall building and you go and say, I want to go to eight, the 83rd floor and it tells you to go in elevator H. Um, it'll be hard for our consultants to, you know, sort of keep trap, keep track of that in an evaluation sense, but generally these modes of transportation, you have to be very careful as you continue to add stations. If the chosen technology is interoperable with either of the two high speed rail options at the ends, might there be a possibility of through service to the proposed DFW HSTC line? So the, the question that's being asked is actually, you know, our preference uh, from a mobility standpoint or from a customer standpoint, we would call that a one seat ride. So you, you get on in Fort Worth or Arlington, you don't have to leave the train and it goes all the way to Houston or you get on in Dallas and you don't have to leave the train and it get, and you get off in San Antonio. So the regional transportation council is very focused on that, that level of service on a one seat ride. We, we're not going to uh, have that bias us in, in a fair evaluation of all of the, the options. And anticipation that it's possible we could have a different high-speed rail technology or a different high-speed rail company or a hyperloop technology or a magnetic levitation technology to make sure we're transparent and clear in a fair and comprehensive evaluation. We have written into our agreement with Texas Central Partners that we would have a cross-platform transfer. We wouldn't have a, we wouldn't be at a different station. We wouldn't be four blocks away. We wouldn't, we would, you know, work on a uh, a system to minimize um, the difficulty to go from one train or the other. So in theory, the preference is wouldn't it be great if we could have the one technology that goes everywhere minimize transfers, uh, minimize the seamlessness of it, get the economies of scale. That would be our preference, uh, but we're prepared to uh, come up with a, a different um, mix if necessary, um, but we have assurances and we will have to assure the same thing in the Fort Worth side where uh, anyone coming up in TxDOT's tier two would have a similar convenient partnership driven relationship at the station in, in Fort Worth for that to occur as well. Is the plan at this time to share the right of way with heavy rail or build a separate alignment in the general area? Well, a lot of these modes, and uh, I don't know, maybe we, we turn this over to, to Chris, a lot of these modes because they're high speed rail or in their own rights of way and don't mix with freight. So you may want to talk a little bit about that. And then I want to talk about I-30 
in on the way to Fort Worth. I want I want to mention that after that. Absolutely. Uh, there are a lot of options on the table right now. As you saw, there's 43 different alignments right now, 43 different corridors out there. And those are pretty broad brushes at the moment. As we advance through the process, we get more specific. Each technology has different criteria for how it can turn, how it can handle a grade. That affects exactly what it looks like. So at this point, it's very conceptual. Um, it could possibly be <clears throat> within adjacent to uh, even over at some place, uh, crossing somehow, railroad right of way, but it's too early to tell. As we step through the process, as we get toward the third level of screening, we get to be pretty specific about what that looks like. And then in the second phase of the project, we actually get into preliminary engineering that gets even more specific. So at this time, uh, everything is on the table. Yeah, so you have a couple of modes of transportation that could actually share track with freight railroad. You show those at grade. As you get into higher speeds, you, you, you can't share track with freight. You often are up in the ground, up in the air. There's no reason why we couldn't partner with freight railroads to try to use their corridor and ensure some safety protocol so a freight train doesn't hurt our columns and there's spacing requirements that don't make that as convenient. So you could be sharing or near a freight right of way even though you're up in the air. Um, in some modes, you might be sharing the track, depending if it's a slower speed, high speed rail investment. Um, and then obviously we have lots of routes that aren't in, uh, in freight quarters at all, but the TRE family clearly would be a family and, you know, some proximity to the UP quarter would be certainly a family. I don't think we're going to be on the UP track. Um, uh, but you might be next to it in some elevated way. But it does remind me, the question, the, the question does remind me, the one benefit of Interstate 30 west of Cooper Street in Arlington is that freeway has to be totally redesigned and rebuilt. So when you see a line on Interstate 30 east of Cooper, you're going to see lots of complicated things because the 360 interchange is being constructed, the 161 interchange is in place, the Hampton Street Bridge is in place. Some of the Loop 12 interchange is in place. So we kind of know the roadway and what can react to it. In the case of Cooper Street West, we may be able to design a high-speed rail with a total new, brand new freeway where you're, you're given probably the priority of the grade and tangents to high-speed rail and let the roadway take the rest of the right-of-way. So there's some intriguing things. Now, it's not freight, but there's goods movement on Interstate 30. So it's possible we may be doing very innovative things on Interstate 30 west of Cooper because we have to, re we have to pay for the rebuilding of Interstate 30 anyway. Um, and it gives us an interest opportunity to, to try to build two modes in the same quarter. The other thing that's important is if we can be on public sector right away, versus private sector right away, I think that's a benefit. Um, the, more, the more we're on land owned by government, building a public sector investment is better than having to extract land from private citizens. So uh, those type of things will be brought into the process uh, as these options, or these alignments or quarters are looked at as well. Any other comments, uh, Ms. Amanda? We do not have any uh, callers waiting to speak to the meeting as of now, but maybe just a last call since we're a few minutes away from 7 p.m. So if anyone is on the telephone line and would like to make a comment, ask a question to the meeting, please press zero now. We'll tame and uh, city and zip code, and then you'll be placed into the call. No questions on the online platform, but I want to encourage you, if you're still online with us, to please type in if you'd like an answer to it this evening. And we will be wrapping up shortly, so I remind everyone that we do have additional project information on our project webpage. Again, if you're watching online, you can see that on the screen here for those on the phone, I will read this to you. 
It's www.nctcog.org forward slash dfw hyphen hstcs. And online, you can view this presentation, a pre recorded presentation. You can view presentation slides. You can view the presentation slides in Spanish. We also have a map of the families of alignments, a technology fact sheet, evaluation criteria, the purpose and need for the study, and all of those can be found in both English and Spanish. And we also have a recent press release and a map of the full study area. All right, we do have one caller, um, Councilwoman Mendelson from the city of Dallas. So let me um, make her live. Councilwoman Hi, Mendelson, um, hello. Thanks for the great presentation. And thanks for inviting the community to give this input. I just want to echo um, Michael Morris's, I'm sorry, not Mike Morris, I'm Michael. Oh, <laughs> I want to just also, um, give my support for I-30 as um, a leading alternative and also a limited number of stops because I do think that um, the traction for this direct downtown to downtown connection very much relies on speed. And um, I hope to go visit my colleagues over in Fort Worth and spend a day in their museums and having um, lunch and enjoying, enjoying our sister city. So um, I think this is a great project and Anything we can do to help people connect in this way, in a fast way, I'm in support of. So thanks again for offering this for community input. Yeah, council member, thank you very much for your public service. Thank you for supporting Michael Rogers' comment on I-30. And thank you for your service on the Regional Transportation Council. Um, you're, you as a member of that council is supporting this tier two environmental and we as a staff very much appreciate that support from you. So thank you for taking time to be with us this evening. Certainly my pleasure. Okay, Rebecca, is there any, Amanda, do you have anyone else? Kimberly? So I think, Rebecca, we turn it back over to you to, anything else you wish to say? No, I just wanted to thank everyone for their time today and just a reminder, you can always submit comments online on the project website. We'll have a um, comment form open through October 16th, but you can always email us any questions. Let us know if you would like any documents mailed to you and sign up to receive project updates. And with that, I think we will wrap it up. So Rebecca, thank you. Thank you to all the presenters. Thank you for all the staffs that have been working on the presentations. There's a whole bunch of folks from the consultant team and from the COG team busy working on lots of things, and I very much appreciate their support. If Sandy Wesh is listening, Sandy, thank you for your study design uh, that we're following in this process, and we are adjourned for this evening. Thank you. <laughs>